in a variety of simple boxes. And moving frozen foods over long distances was simply out of the question. Then, in the late 50s, an American, Malcolm McLean, came up with an idea that would revolutionize world trade by packing all goods into modular containers similar in design and dimension. They could be easily transported anywhere in the world by road, rail, or sea. As the use of these containers has grown, so has the size of the ships that carry them. The Atlanta is one of 12 SX-class ships built for OOCL by the Samsung Shipyard in Korea. It took over 8,000 workers nearly nine months to build her at a cost of over $150 million. She is the largest ship ever ever built when she was contract. And uh, she had been installed the largest main engine when uh, available in that time. For the engine power that he was given, for the speed he won, he's done, a, for me, a great job. When first launched, the SX class held the world record as the largest container ship ever built. We used the high tensile steel to get the minimum light ship weight so that we can maximize the cargo loading capability. It's that combination of high tensile steel and the design of the hull that gives the Atlanta her enormous load carrying ability. This that runs the full length of the ship is a very important structural member for stresses because you must remember there's so many big openings that the ship is bending all the time. In this area, when you've got 95,000 horsepower pushing this ship, the pressure is enormous. You can see that the, the frame structure is very heavy. So this is a high stress area, especially in heavy weather. The real pride of the Atlanta is the power plant. This is one of the world's biggest diesel engines. A 12-cylinder turbocharged monster its sheer size is breathtaking. The engine fills a room six stories high, six stories of incredible power. The engine peaks at 104 revolutions per minute, but generates a mind-blowing 93,120 brake horsepower. That's over 700 times more power than an average family car. And all that power adds up to one thing, speed through the water. She can average nearly 25 nautical miles an hour. That's fast enough to water ski behind, as long as you can handle that huge stern wash. While at sea, the Atlanta can notch up over 570 nautical miles a day. But a speed like that comes at a price. This ship, she burns a lot of fuel. Full speed, she'll burn 230, 240 tons a day. That's a staggering 10 tons of diesel every hour the ship is underway. She may be thirsty, but she's also a clean engine. And that starts with clean fuel. A series of filters remove impurities before the diesel is pumped into a holding tank and heated to 129 degrees. Hot fuel and gas is an explosive mix. Number seven cargo hold, number seven cargo hold. The fire alarm's gone off. No other sound strikes fear into the heart of the mariner like the fire alarm. Starboard side, bay one, starboard side. Let me know A fire at sea can spell disaster. A small spark can soon become a fireball. The crew have to be ready to act in an instant. In the ocean, you're on your own. You've got nobody. You've got no shore facilities, no emergency services, 
we just rely on our own training and our own emergency services. But a fire is the worst. In an emergency like this, First Mate Jonathan rallies the crew. The captain calls the shots. We are now proceeding forward for investigation. Aye, aye. And on deck, on deck, please. Getting it right can mean the difference between survival and disaster. Both those are ready. OK, I'm going to start the emergency fire pump. I got me that. The crew have to work together closely. When the emergency pumps come on, they come on strong. Seawater is pumped onto a fire at a rate of over 4,000 liters per minute through high pressure hoses. Training every Saturday afternoon, two hours of training every Saturday. We have uh, fire drills, forward, galley accommodation, all over the ship. Within a space of three months, we'll have covered every part of the ship in a fire drill. And 95% of all fires at sea are in the engine room. Maybe down at the CO2 room, the CO2 room, you read over. Yeah, copy. Each week, the Atlantis crew carry out an intensive fire drill. A fire in the engine room is the most dangerous of all and cannot be fought with water. Fighting an engine room fire requires a different strategy. This room is filled with hundreds of bottles of carbon dioxide, which can be directed automatically to the engine room via a network of sprinkler systems, starving the fire of oxygen. The Atlanta has been powering her way towards Singapore, with Captain Llewellyn determined to keep her on schedule. The Atlanta's ability to maintain her top speed is thanks to her revolutionary propeller. This 85-ton, six-bladed piece of molded alloy spinning at just 104 revolutions per minute provides enough thrust to drive her forward at 25 knots. Sitting behind that propeller is a huge rudder that plunges nearly 12 meters below the surface of the waves. It's roughly the same size as a double-decker bus. And with a surface area like that, the captain doesn't want it angled for too long. A rudder at an angle causes drag, which slows the ship down. You need to keep the rudder movements to a minimum. So I like just to keep her within one degree on either side, but that depends on the sea conditions. Big swells, big following sea, you can't do that. At the moment, the sea conditions are perfect for steering a straight line to Singapore. ETA, 0700 hours. The first sign that the Atlanta is getting closer to port is the sudden increase in sea traffic. One, two, three, four, five, six. One of the problems with being a giant is avoiding the dwarves of the ocean. For the captain, arrival at port is one of the most stressful parts of the journey. He has to be ready to react in an instant. Well, it's his job to keep out of my way, but he's not moving, you see. He's still coming across. Now he's going round. Now he's going to come across my stern. It's going to be a long day for the captain and his crew. Getting into port is just the first hurdle. It's the end of, not the end of the working day, but it's, it's, because uh, we got cargo work straight away after, but it's, uh, it's the end of the problems in the uh, Singapore Straits. So we can relax a little. Engine tested and understood. While the captain maneuvers the Atlanta carefully closer to port, 2,500 kilometers away, another key individual is frantically working behind the scenes.